I came to the tomb this morning bearing spices, but I also carried memories, memories of Golgotha, Golgotha, where all the ugliness and brutality that ever brewed within the human breast burst forth. Respect, reason, truth, justice, love, all hung suspended on the center cross that day. I wept until I could weep no more. Jesus, the kindest man who ever lived. Jesus, the one who set me free from demons that tormented me. Jesus, my Lord and Master, had been falsely charged. He'd been smeared, jeered, stripped, and whipped. And then he was nailed to a cross that was jointed into place. How could that one who had given life to so many be dying on a cross as if he were a common criminal? And how could the crowds be cheering about it? Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Jesus spoke forgiveness in the midst of mayhem. It, I looked at him in amazement. Surely now the authorities would realize they'd made a mistake. But no, the horror continued. I implored God to tear open the heavens and rain down judgment or to miraculously lift Christ from that cross. Instead, darkness devoured the sun. It was a deep darkness, a midday darkness, an airy darkness, a supernatural darkness, a darkness as if all light had been siphoned out of the universe. The cat calls from the crowd stopped. People started to slink away, but Mary stayed, mesmerized by the magnitude of what was happening. Surely, they were about to witness a cataclysmic miracle. But minutes dragged into hours, punctuated only by an uneasy onlookers and the agonizing breaths of dying men impaled on crosses. When I thought I would suffocate from grief, an anguished voice from the center cross cried, My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? I closed my eyes and beat my hands on my chest. How could God abandon his son in the moment of his greatest need? Then I heard a deep gasp and looked at the cross. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Jesus murmured and took one last breath. The earth shook. Rocks and tombs split open. Dead people spilled out of the graves. The centurion exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. I shuddered. Surely he was. But then, why was this happening? The soldiers stuck a spear in Jesus' side to be sure he was dead, then pulled him from the cross. Nicodemus and Joseph took his body and wrapped it tenderly in clean white linen. I followed them as they carried his body to the empty, silent sepulcher. Then I went home, confused and brokenhearted. I returned to the tomb this morning, frightened but determined to anoint Jesus' body with spices. I knew I couldn't roll the stone away. I knew I might be arrested or killed. I didn't care. Life without Jesus isn't worth living anyway. When I arrived, I was surprised to find the stone had been rolled away. The tomb was empty. Jesus was gone. I didn't understand. Oh God, I cried. Who would further defile my lovely Lord by stealing his stone-cold body? Distraught, I searched for John and Peter. When I found them, I told them that Jesus was gone that someone had taken his body. They ran to the tomb to check it out. I followed, but stayed outside weeping. They brushed past me on their way home. After they left, I looked in the tomb again. There, through my tears, I saw two angels. Why are you crying, they asked. Why was I crying? Wasn't it obvious? They've taken my Lord away, and I don't know where to find him, I said. Someone came up behind me and asked, Why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, I turned and said, Oh, sir, 
If you have taken my Lord away, please tell me where you have put him so I can go and get him. Mary, he said. That's all. Just Mary. But with that one word, life and hope return, I knew that voice. Raboni, Master, I cried as I knelt before him. I would have hugged that new life out of him if he hadn't said, Don't hold up unto me. I must return to my father. Let go of me and go tell my disciples that I'm ascending to my father and your father, my God and your God. I didn't want to leave Jesus, but when he said go, I went. Peter, John, Bartholomew, Andrew, Philip, listen, Jesus is alive. I saw him. He sent me to tell you he's returning to his father. That's why the tomb is empty. Jesus isn't there because he's alive. Why had we ever doubted? Jesus told us that he had to die, but that he would rise again in three days. That's why the chief priests insisted on posting guards at the tomb. Sometimes I wonder about those of us who call ourselves Jesus' friends. We can be so slow to understand, so slow to recognize who it is who walks among us. We look at the cross or even the empty tomb and see an upside down world. It is, but wonder of all wonders, the cross is where God turns the world and everyone who trusts in his son right side up again. I leave the garden with all the spices I brought this morning, as well as with memories, memories I'll never forget. But I leave with so much more. I leave with the risen Christ, and life will never be the same. Not now, and not for eternity. <laughs>